Why are people still buying and loving this 2019 Intel MacBook when you can get the 15 inch MacBook Air? And how do these two compare? How much better is the new Air? That's what we're gonna look at in this video. Now, first off, the big reason is price. You can get one of these for $825, refurbished on Amazon, I'll link the link below. And there are a lot of reviews of people that just got one and they are very happy but the MacBook Air you can get for $1,250 at the base model. Here are the specs side by side and the Intel used to cost $2,400 compared to $1,699. And I actually used this one for about a year and a half and then it sat on my shelf for a couple years and it works perfectly fine. Now what I'm curious about, how do the speakers and the webcam compare? What about performance and what about battery life? Size wise, they are similar and even the bezels on the sides are practically identical. Identical. Of course, the Air has that notch, whereas the Intel MacBook has a thicker top bezel to hide the webcam. The old Mac has a 720p webcam and looking at it, it looks pretty dang bad. And this is the 1080p webcam on the 15 inch MacBook Air. Let me know what you guys think about how it looks and how the microphone quality compares in the comments below. Now, as far as weight, the Intel MacBook is definitely a lot heavier. It's about a pound, but in the hand, it feels more than that. And it's also because the 15 inch MacBook Air is thinner than the Intel version. And I love how thin and light this thing is. Now, as far as ports, both of them have two Thunderbolt ports on the left hand side, but on the right hand side, the Air lacks the other two Thunderbolt ports, they just have the headphone jacks. And so you do get a lot more ports with the Intel version. Now the Air does have MagSafe charging, which is really nice. It pops in and as far as charging, this Intel one takes forever. It took an hour and a half to get to 50% compared to just 30 minutes. And then the total charge is half the time. Now what is crazy is inside of this Intel, you have a 100 watt hour battery compared to 66. And even so, the Air will get two to three times the battery life. This Intel will literally die in two hours if you push it heavily compared to six. And then for light tasks, you can get 15 hours out of this compared to about 7.5. So if you care about battery life, don't get the Intel. Now, the crazy thing is, even though this has a new Magic Keyboard, this Intel one, which brought back the Magic Keyboard, actually has more travel. It feels just as good, if not slightly better. The trackpads are both very large. And one thing you'll notice is that this has the touch bar that a lot of people hated. Now, it does have the escape key that is split on the side. This was an updated version. And I was never a huge hater of the touch bar, but I definitely still prefer having regular buttons. Now, one interesting thing is that the displays are practically identical in terms of contrast, colors, um, sharpness, the HDR video you, that you guys are looking at. Let me know if you guys see any differences. DCI-P3 color accuracy and even the brightness is identical. But what is crazy is that the Intel Mac can support four displays compared to just one on the new 15 inch. And you can actually do two 6Ks or four 4Ks with this thing. That is a lot better, even four years older. Now you'll notice that the 15 inch Air does not have those speaker grills that the Intel MacBook has, but it does have six speakers built in just like the Intel version. So I'm curious, how will the speakers compare? Let's go ahead and take a listen. You guys heard it for yourselves. The Intel Mac sounds louder, has better bass, better mids. So now we know why people are still buying this thing. Now, of course, this thing is a pound lighter. Um, the Air doesn't have the speaker grills. It's a lot thinner. So it's good for its size, but it's still not as good. And now we are gonna get into performance. How will these stack up? Running Blackmagic's SSD speed test, we already see that the Air is faster both in write 
and read speeds. But the crazy thing is, if you get the 256 gig, that thing is half the speed, about a thousand megabytes slower, both for read and write, compared to this Intel, which costs less when you're buying it. That is crazy in 2023. Now let's run the latest Geekbench 6.1 and both of these have 16 gigs of RAM. The Intel does have more performance cores, it has six plus six more threads. And look at that guys, as far as a single core score, we have a difference of 82% and in multi-core, 73%. So not double, but looking at the numbers, it is close to that. That is crazy. But what about graphics performance? We have the last AMD graphics that were in these machines, the 5300M, compared to a 10-core M2. The Air finished this test in two minutes. This has been going on for four minutes, and it's only 25% done. And here we go, the M2 Air is 47% more powerful for compute tasks. But of course, that is performance and applications for different stuff. A lot of people are gonna be just web browsing. So let's use speedometer 2.0 and see what the speed is for that. And oh my goodness, guys, look at this. 138 compared to 437. That's over three times the web browsing performance. And let me tell you what, just using this Intel machine in Mac OS and for websites, it feels a lot slower than the 15 inch Air. But what about tougher web-based applications? Here I have Figma opened, and this is a project by 500 Designs, one of the best design studios in California. And with a 15 inch, everything is super smooth. I can zoom in here and see how long it takes to load this up. Very, very fast, high resolution images. Let's try with this one. Even scrolling down, you guys see there's some stuttering, there's some delay. Let's zoom in here. Waiting, waiting, there you go. So you guys could see it is not as good not even close. And now I selected 12 high resolution layers and we are gonna export these and see how long it takes. And that took four minutes and eight seconds compared to a minute and 48, more than twice as long with the old Intel version. So you guys could see the performance even for web tasks is not even close. And what about photo editing in the latest version of Lightroom that uses graphics for acceleration? Well, one thing in the settings, the M2 Air has full graphic acceleration, whereas the Intel one says limited, and even in custom, it will not let me change that. Now the app loaded three times quicker on the Air, and switching between these images here, Oh gosh, now these are high resolution RAWs, fully edited, so everything has to be done in real time when switching through. Definitely a lot slower on the Intel model. And now let's export 50 of these images. I'm really curious to see what we're gonna get in terms of difference. And the MacBook Air heats up really fast and it gets really hot because it is fanless and it does actually throttle and slows itself down because of that, especially in Lightroom where your CPU and GPU are both being pushed to the limits. But the Intel one, even though they have a bad rap, well, it is staying fairly cool with those dual fans. Oh my goodness, guys, we have a massive difference here. The Air took a minute and seven seconds to export this, even though it does throttle. Whereas the Intel, it took four minutes and 10 seconds. Yes, pretty much four times longer for the same task. And that's because not only do you have the raw performance difference, but Apple Silicon is also very efficient with their memory design, the unified memory, the other improvements. That is insane. And lastly, video editing with Final Cut. Let me mute this right here. Now, both these can play back the standard 4K HEVC footage. Now, if you start going into tougher tasks, 10-bit HEVC, the Air will have no problem, but this Intel will. Now, just to make this quick, I'm gonna go ahead and export this five-minute project that has lots applied, some film grain, and the MacBook Air is taking the lead right from the start. And I don't know if you guys can hear that, but the fans are spinning up now on the Mac right here, 4200, 3900, 
they're going up higher on the Intel-based Mac, even though our CPU and GPU are only about half use, because this does have encoders built in, not as good as the Air, but they are there. And in this case, the Air stayed at around 60 degrees Celsius because of their really good encoders, it doesn't even get hot. And that took two minutes and 20 seconds compared to three minutes on the Intel-based Mac. Now, doing other things, even opening this up, takes three, four times longer. The program's a lot more stuttery. Um, doing like stabilization, instead of about eight seconds, it takes about 25. So there is a massive difference in actual usability. So you guys let me know what you think. Why are people still buying the uh, Intel-based MacBooks? Of course, the price is lower, and I, I think that's why people are doing that. But personally, I would say, if you need to buy one, I would spend a little bit more money, get yourself one of these at a discount using the links below, it is a much nicer machine overall, even though in some ways the Intel version does be out the new Apple Silicon based version. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe and check out one of those videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.